I'm a molecular biologist at the Forestry Commission. I use DNA to try and answer some questions about plants and animals in the forest that we can't answer any other way. For example, you can tell a lot about a tree or an animal just by looking at it, how big it is, an animal, how fast it runs. But when it comes to questions about relationships between plants, uh, gene flow between plants, perhaps migration routes over, over long periods of time, then we have to look, use a molecule called DNA. And that's what I use all this fancy equipment in here to do. All, all the proteins, everything we're made of, is coded for in the genome. So trees have a genome that makes them grow their leaves the shape they are, makes them grow the height they are. And it's the differences in genes that we're often very interested in because why does one tree grow very well on a particular soil and another tree of the same species doesn't grow well? And it will be down to the genes that are, are making this tree grow particularly fast or with particularly good wood. What we do is we pick the best trees that are natural trees and then you cross the best trees together to make the next generation of trees even better. And that's, that's the sort of the, the nub of tree breeding. But it's nothing to do with Franken trees. There'll be no genes being imported into trees. I was definitely inspired by my biology teacher. He gave us the young folk respect. He allowed you to speak your mind whilst not being outrageous and, and he just made the, the subject exciting and that, and that was when I really thought right biology how animals and plants work this is something I you know would actually want to study further it's these little things that make a huge difference in where you end up because I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure without that particular teacher I probably wouldn't be doing this now